Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail Lieutenant Faye Adams, United States Army. Our story is entitled, Army Doctor. This is the story of the first woman doctor ever to be awarded a commission in the regular army. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... If you are a registered nurse, there are outstanding opportunities for you in the Army Nurse Corps. Here is a nursing career with a future, offering opportunities for world travel, specialized training, and a good salary. You will begin as a commissioned officer, enjoying the same prestige, pay, and benefits as the male officers. You'll work with the best of equipment, have opportunities to develop your professional skills. In addition, you will enjoy a 30-day vacation each year with pay. But most important of all, you'll be doing your country a vital service. Act now. Find out if you are qualified to serve as an Army nurse. Write to the Surgeon General, U.S. Army Nurse Corps, Washington 25, D.C. Write today. Your country needs you. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production... Army Doctor. On March 11 of this year in Washington, D.C., an historic event took place when First Lieutenant Faye Margaret Adams was sworn in as the first woman physician ever to hold a commission in the United States Regular Army. Behind the brief newspaper clipping which announced this event lies a story. A story that began in a child's questioning mind and was to grow from question to understanding to determination. Come along, Faye. Okay. Daddy. Yes? When will Mommy get to come home from the hospital? Oh, in a couple of weeks, maybe, if all goes well. I think in a couple of weeks. Will it be for good this time? Well, I hope so. But you always say that. Well, I always hope it. Why can't the doctor make her well? Well, he's trying, honey. He's helped Mother a great deal, but... But what, Daddy? Well, Faye, it's a little hard to explain. You see, Mommy's heart isn't very strong. And every once in a while, she has to go to the hospital so she can rest and so the doctor can treat her. Well, then he ought to make her well. Well, maybe he will this time. I wish I was a doctor. Yeah, so do I sometimes. I suppose I have to grow up first. You have to grow up first to do anything. But I wish it didn't take so long. Well, it gives you a long time to think about it. Meantime, let's think about catching a bus for home, all right? All right. Okay, come along. Yes, Daddy. When you're ten years old, you can wish to be a lot of things. A doctor, a fireman, a movie actress, the president of a bank. One day it's one thing, and the next day it's another with most children. Something made you want to be a fireman, and then that something is forgotten, and you look for an idol somewhere else. But in the case of Faye Adams, there was no chance of the something that made her want to be a doctor to be forgotten. Faye's mother suffered from a rheumatic heart. From the time that Faye was seven until she was 17, her mother was hospitalized frequently, and the doctor came so regularly to the house that he was almost like a member of the family. A childish curiosity about a mother's heart about people being sick and why couldn't the doctor make her mother well, grew gradually into an understanding and a desire. I'll stop by again in the morning. If she isn't any better, then I think we ought to put her back in the hospital. It'll be easier all the way around for everybody. Whatever you think best, doctor. Dad. Well, Faye, don't you think you ought to be in bed? I was waiting for you. Dr. Henry's mother any better? A little. Not as much as I'd like to see, but she's resting comfortably. Will she ever get really well? We hope so, Faye. That's what we're working toward. We're doing all we can. 
Oh, get my coat for me, will you, Faye, while I wash up? That's a girl. Dad? Yes, honey, what is it? Dad, will I get to go to college next year? Why, I don't know, Puss. You want to? Yes, very much. Why do you want to? Because I've decided... I decided it a long time ago. I want to be a doctor. Well, there ought to be a way of working it out, I think. Oh, Dad, I was hoping you'd say that. I'm so glad. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Faye. It isn't just as easy as all that. There's the question of money, you know. I think I can get a scholarship, but scholarships only pay tuition. I'd have to pay my own room and board. That's why I asked you if you thought I could go. Well, now, I'll tell you what, honey. You look into this scholarship business and find out how much it's going to cost for room and board, and then we'll talk some more about it. And I think maybe we'll be able to swing it if you can get your tuition paid for. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Dr. Henry, I have your coat here. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Faye. Well, I gave your father a new prescription to have filled. You'll see to it that your mother takes it along with the other medicine? Yes, of course. Well, that's fine. You're a good nurse, Faye. You've been a big help to us all. Dr. Henry, I was just talking to Dad about going to college next fall. Oh, you're planning to go. That's fine, Faye. I want to be a doctor. Do you think I can? A doctor? Well, I don't see why not. If you're, if you're willing to work hard, it's hard work being a doctor, Faye. I know, but I think it's worth it. I've watched you and the other doctors with Mother for so long. A long time ago, I decided that if I could spend my life helping sick people get well, I... Well, I'd be very happy. I guess that sounded a little high-flown, but I didn't mean it to. No. No, it didn't sound high-flown, Faye. You have to have the desire to cure sickness, to see you through the long years of study, the long years after that. When I was a boy, I said just about what you've said. I wanted to make sick people well. That's what doctors did, so I wanted to be a doctor. I still have that same desire. It's that desire that sees you through the long days, the long nights, the discouragements, the heartbreak, the, the feeling of inadequacy that hits you time and time again. Good luck, Faye. You go to school and work hard and make your goal a goal to win. <laughs> In the fall of 1936, Faye Adams entered the University of California as a pre-med student. By the year 1936, the idea of a woman becoming a doctor was not such a radical idea as it had seemed a generation before, but that doesn't mean that it was universally accepted. Oh, come on, Faye. Take some time off for a change. Johnny, I can't. I've been taking way too much time off as it is. I told you I had an exam tomorrow, and it's going to be a tough one. All you think about are good grades. You're a grind. All right, so I'm a grind. I have to get good grades to get into medical school. I can't understand why any girl would want to be a doctor. Why don't you settle for marrying me and raising five or six nice, noisy children? Because I don't want to. I want to be a doctor. All right, so be a doctor. Well, that doesn't say you can't knock off tonight and go to a movie. But I already told you I can't. I've got to study for that exam. Okay, if that's the way you want it. But I guess you'd better count me out from now on, then. Why, Johnny, I already have. A long time ago. And so Faye Adams pursued her studies and aimed for a goal and prayed that there'd be enough money to somehow see her attain that goal didn't fully realize that there were now forces in the world at work which were going to affect both her and the goal she had set. The year that Faye Adams graduated from her pre-medical course at college was the year 1940. A large part of the free world was at war defending its freedom. America was watching and waiting uneasily for the time and the place to come that would find us defending our freedom too. But the war hadn't really touched us yet. The problems of the rest of the world had not yet become our problem in the fullest sense. And to Faye Adams, who wanted to be a doctor, who had dreamed of it and planned for it and worked and studied for it, there was a final important question to be answered. A question more important to her right then than the problems of a world across the scene. Oh, here's a letter that came for you, Faye. Oh, thanks, Dad. Oh, it's the letter I've been waiting for. Dad, do you suppose...
No. No such luck. Well, that ends that. Why, what is it, baby? We are sorry to inform you that there are no scholarships available for women for this next term. If you care to apply for entry, we will be happy to consider your application. Very truly yours. Sure, I'd be very happy to apply. But on what? Oh, Faye, I'm sorry. Oh, Dad, it, it's not your fault. After all, I can't expect you to be able to put out several thousand dollars for medical school just like that. It's just that I've worked so hard for it. I've wanted it so much. I've got the grades it takes. Besides, I guess I'm just not a very good sport. Now, there, there, honey. Now, don't cry. Something will come along. It'll work out. Maybe you can get a job for a while. And then... And then, when I've saved up enough money by the time I'm 50 and have forgotten everything I ever learned, then I can go to med school. I, I'm sorry, Dad. Just leave me alone for a while. Be all right when I get used to it. On December 7, 1941, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. On the following day, we declared war on Japan and subsequently on Germany as well. Our young men were drafted into the armed services. But too many of them were forced to do work far behind the lines, work that had to be done, but for which we could not spare the manpower. Now the question of allowing women to enlist in an auxiliary service to the Army and Navy was raised. Congress passed the necessary law, and the first of these organizations, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, was formed. To many young women, enlistment in the WAC offered the opportunity to perform a vital and patriotic service to their country in time of war. Faye, what is the matter with you? Hmm? No, not, nothing, Shirley. I'm all right. Oh, come on. Come on. It must be something. I think I'm going to resign from the camp. Resign from the camp? Why? Oh, I don't know. Kitty's been getting under your skin? No, no, it isn't that. It just doesn't seem very important somehow. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? I think I'll join the wax. That way I can do something to help out in the oh. war. <laughs> For heaven's sake, how do you like that? What's the matter? Is something wrong about it? <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because I was just about ready to do exactly the same thing myself. That's what I was starting to tell you that you weren't listening. <laughs> well, come on then. Let's get going. <laughs> Faye Adams enlisted in the WAC in 1943 and was sent for her basic training to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. After completing basic training, she was to be assigned to a job. Faye, the assignments are out. Did you get yours? Yes, I was waiting for you to come in, Shirley. Well, where are you going? To the Aberdeen Proving Ground in Maryland. I'm to be a technician in the, uh, let's see, what does it say? The uh, Ballistics Research Laboratory. Uh, I guess that's on account of all the physics and chemistry I had in college. I'm glad it's at least related to what I wanted to do. You still want to go to med school? Still. Can't forget in a couple of weeks what you spent practically your whole life aiming for. <laughs> but you didn't tell me where you're going, Shirley. Washington, to the Pentagon. Well, that's close by. Maybe we'll be able to get together sometime. Oh, we sure will. Say, are you glad you did it? Did what? You mean join the wax? Yes. <laughs> it's the best thing that's happened to me in the last three years. Private Adams. Uh, yes, sir. I, I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed the paper that you presented to us. Why, thank you, Dr. Woods. It was an excellent piece of work and very nicely presented, which is more than I can say for a great many scientific papers I've heard given. <laughs> Most of them induce as much sleep as they do facts. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, I certainly did. Uh, are you making a career of chemistry, Private Adams? Well, no, sir, not exactly. I was a pre-medical student in college, and and I wasn't able to go ahead with medical school. I still hope to someday. I see. But doesn't the Army offer medical training? Couldn't you go ahead with it in the service? It's not available for women right now, but they do give training in physical therapy. I've applied for that as, well, as the next best thing. Well, I hope you get what you want. Thank you, sir. I do enjoy the work at the ballistics research lab, but 
Well, I guess what it comes down to is that I'd rather work with patients than with chemicals. Which, when you come right down to it, is the way a prospective doctor ought to feel. <laughs> well, good luck, my dear, and goodbye. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Army Doctor. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Here's a message to young women with college degrees in physical education or the biological sciences. You may be eligible for a commission as a physical therapist in the Women's Medical Specialist Corps. Receive all the benefits of a second lieutenant while you attend the Army Special Physical Therapy course. Write the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington, 25, D.C. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Army Doctor. <laughs> For the paper she had presented to the group of visiting scientists, and for additional work that she had done at the Ballistics Research Laboratory, Private Faye Adams was given the Army Commendation Ribbon. In October 1944, her application for physical therapy training was accepted, and she was sent to Lawson General Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. In June 1945, because of her special training, Faye Adams was commissioned a second lieutenant, and after six months of working in Lawson General Hospital, she was sent to the Pacific area. Her assignment was to one of the station hospitals in Okinawa, where she was placed in charge of the physical therapy department. Come in. Major Harris, Lieutenant Adams reporting for duty, sir. Well, Lieutenant Adams, come in, come in. I've been expecting you. When did you arrive? This morning, sir. Have you been assigned to quarters yet? Yes, sir. Everything's taken care of. And you're all set to go to work? All set. <laughs> well, that's fine. I might as well tell you, Lieutenant Adams, that you've come to me with a very fine recommendation indeed. We're very happy to have you with us. Thank you, sir. I'm looking forward to it. Good. As you probably know, we have a good many patients here at the hospital, cases that we haven't been able to send back to the States yet. Now, your job is to help them get along to the point where they can go home, which I may add is what they themselves want to do more than anything else. I should think so. Well, if you're ready to go to work... I'm ready. Then come along. I'll show you the wards. Take you on a cook's tour of the place. Now, the cases you'll be working on are mostly in this ward. We'll just go in and have a quick look around. Uh, go right in, Lieutenant Adam. Major Harris. Major Harris wanted in surgery. Oh, yes, I was expecting that call. Will you excuse me, Lieutenant? I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Of course, Major Harris. Have a look around. I'll be back in a few minutes. Hey! Faye Adams, over here! Faye! Well, you're just about the last person I expected to see in this Johnny. place. Johnny, I had no idea you were even in this part of the world. That's no wonder we broke off communication, remember? Yes, I remember. Well, well, so you finally made it. And I never thought you'd really go through with it. How do you like being a doc? I'm not a doctor, Johnny. I didn't get to go to med school. Yeah, but, but I thought... You, you... Oh, what are you, a, a nurse? No, I'm a physical therapist. It was the nearest thing I could get to being a doctor in the Army. Well, this is certainly a new wrinkle. What about you, Johnny? What have you been doing since we last saw each other? Oh, nothing special. I got in the Army, and they sent me out here after I got my commission, and then I got into some action, and... Well, this is where I landed. Like you said, here I am. That's what happened. But how are you? Oh, I'll be up around any day now. You can't keep an O'Connor down for long, you know. Of course, it might take a little help from you, Doc. Uh, Johnny, don't say that. I told you I'm not a doctor. But you will be. As long as you've come this far, you'll keep going. With the GI Bill, after you finish up here, you can go back and to med school for free on the government. That's right. I've thought a lot about it. You know what I'm going to do? Marry me? No. Make you my number one patient. And that's something I never thought I'd be. You see, Johnny, you never can tell how something's going to turn out until it does. <laughs> Faye Adams served for 14 months in the Pacific area as a physical therapist. She'd arrived there in December 1945, four months after the end of the war. But though the world was at peace, the business of national defense was going on. And current legislation was pointed toward permanent integration of all of the women's services of the Army. For many years, women had been able to choose business and professional careers. Now, still another outlet was opened up to them, the career of national defense. 
It was a career that seriously interested Lieutenant Faye Adams. Come in. Did you send for me, Major Harris? Yes, Faye, come in, come in. I have some papers here that I thought might just possibly interest you. Transfer? A transfer back to the States, then separation from the Army. Well, it'll be nice to get home and see everybody again, but... Well, but what? I like the work. I like being in the Army. You can be proud of your service, Faye. Thank you, Major. Do you have any idea of what you're going to do when you get out? I know exactly what I'm going to do, if I can. Yes, <laughs> return to active duty. No, not just yet. I'm going to do something that I wanted to do seven years ago. Ooh, seems a long time ago now. Something that I wasn't able to do then and couldn't yet if I hadn't been in the Army. I'm going to go on to medical school, if I still remember enough so they'll take me. Good girl. I was hoping you'd say that. You'll remember enough. Look at all you've been doing here. You'll be way ahead of the rest of the class. Major Harris, I want you to know how much I appreciate all you've done for me in that line. Letting me go on board rounds and sit in on your conferences and explaining things to me. It's going to be a big help to me. Well, we were only too glad to help, Faye. How long have you been in the service now altogether? Four years by the time I get out, probably. Oh, well, the G.I. Bill will see you all the way through med school. Yes, and then... And then what? Then I think I'll try to get back into the Army as a doctor. Well, in that case, I won't say goodbye. I'll see you around, Doc. Yes, sir. Following her separation from the Army in July 1947, Faye Adams entered the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania to continue her medical studies under the GI Bill. In order to keep up her contact with the Army, she joined the organized reserves and attended weekly meetings where she learned of the latest developments in Army medicine. There was time for a little else. Medical school is a full-time job of study with sleep a luxury. And after graduation from medical school, there's the year of internship, a full-time job of work and sleep a rarity. Calling Dr. Adams. Calling Dr. Adams. Dr. Adams wanted in maternity. Hey, hey, Faye. Oh, yes, I hear it. Oh, it's gotten so I hear it before they even say it. What time is it, anyway? No, oh, 2 a.m., wouldn't you know? Why is it babies always pick the middle of the night to start making their appearance? You'd think they'd have the decency to wait until morning. Calling Dr. Adams. Calling Dr. Adams. Dr. I'm Adams. Coming. Calling Dr. Adams. Calling Dr. Adams. I think I'll change my name. I can remember a time not so many years ago when you longed to hear calling Dr. Adams, remember? Oh, go back to sleep, plutocrat. Calling Dr. Adams. Mrs. Watkins, I'm Dr. Adams. I'll be taking care of you. Oh, Doctor, I'm sorry to tell you this way. But I'm so terribly frightened. You mustn't be. Everything will be all right. But the last time when I, I had my little girl, I don't know if I can face it again. Of course you can. It'll be much easier this time. You'll see. They say you always forget how bad it was. But I haven't. I wish I could have. Last time is all over and done with. This time it won't be nearly so bad. You won't go away. I mean, you'll stay with me through it all. I'll be right here. Don't worry about anything. Just think of the very nice baby that you'll soon be holding in your arms. I do feel a little better. Maybe it won't be so bad. No, of course it won't. And before you know it, it'll be all over. That's what you should think about. Not what has been or what is, but what's going to be. <laughs> Mrs. Watkins. Yes. yes, Doctor. Would you like to hold your son just for a minute? Oh, a boy. We wanted a boy. Edward, we're going to call him. Isn't that a nice name? Very nice. Does Fred know? Did you tell him? He's waiting for you down in your room. Now, if you'll let the nurse take the baby. Oh, he's a very nice baby, isn't he? Yes, very nice. And you were a very nice patient. Wasn't so bad now, was it? <laughs> no. Dr. Adams? Yes, Mrs. Watkins. I, I want to tell you. 
You saw the medal that I wear around my neck. Yes. It's a miraculous medal. When I was so frightened before, I prayed. I prayed for a miracle. And the miracle was you. No, not me. Your faith and my faith and the help we gave each other. When she completed her internship, Faye Adams volunteered for a year of active duty as a reserve medical officer, and a few months later made application for a commission in the regular army, an application made possible by legislation enacted by the 82nd Congress, authorizing women doctors to hold regular army commissions. On March 11, 1953, a commission was granted. I, Faye Margaret Adams, having been appointed an officer in the Army of the United States in the grade of First Lieutenant, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. And thus Lieutenant Faye Adams became the first woman doctor in the regular army of the United States. It was an event conceived in the belief that women are equal to men in capability and service. It was an event foreshadowed in two world wars that freedom cannot survive unless it is continually defended and that the defenders of America's freedom be cared for by the best in medicine and medical personnel. It was also an event fulfilled by the dreams, the struggle, and the achievement of one woman. This has been, in essence, her story, but it could be the story of any woman, and it will soon be the story of many women. expansion of the United States Army, more nurses are needed. If you are a registered nurse, volunteer for service with the Army Nurse Corps. There are assignments in this country and overseas. Only qualified graduate nurses can fill them. Write the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>